I'm going to do this a little bit differently than how I normally uh, make a video. Usually I show you um, from start to finish uh, with like a blank document um, how to model something, but I've already created some examples um, and, and what I want to try doing is uh, like reading this document with you um, and then uh, you can kind of follow along as I, I explain. So. Um, what I'm going to show you is how to take your data from ideally some sort of sketch. It's going to be easier for us to reference a sketch than um, say a chart. A chart we could look at the, the, the names of the different parts of the hand or the different dimensions and then map it to like our little diagram here. But it's going to be easier for us to say, okay, uh, I want to make um, a, a splint um, that goes between these two knuckles um, and um, just reference this document and all of the measurements that are uh, neatly displayed here. So we're going to start with um, how to design like a reference part for your finger uh, and then I will talk about how to make a way basic uh, design. Um, so reference parts can look like this, just a very, very, very rough approximation of some measurements of our finger, not actually the same shape, uh, but roughly the same scale and size. Um, way basic design, just rectangular, we're able to put Velcro in it. Um, this doesn't cover your finger, it doesn't cover multiple sides, uh, so it's like not uh, like 100% A plus um, quality, but it's a start. Um, Complex design, if you want to work on something that looks a little bit more organic and like some uh, products that you'll see out on the market um, for, say, like trigger finger, that sort of thing. Uh, more interesting, but still fairly basic design that uh, has a space for Velcro, but also starts to think about um, how can we brace this, the finger side to side um, and laterally by bending uh, these tabs here so we can heat up the 3D printed plastic and, and melt these to uh, an angle or uh, 90 degrees. And then finally, uh, I'll show you briefly, but it's kind of an extension of that last one, um, how you can start extending stuff to uh, make something, uh, maybe cover your whole finger. I feel like this is something that you're just going to have to figure out how to tackle on your own. I will have given you enough. Um, so first we're going to start with the reference part. Uh, you should have access to this document. You should not copy it, but you can kind of read through it just like we're doing right now. Um, what I did, I, initially I put in some images. We're not going to care about these because uh, the images aren't to scale. I just threw them in there for fun. Um, but what we do want to see is this sketch for um, top dimensions and side dimensions. So I threw a... Um, uh, sketch on the top plane. So I created a new sketch and put it on the top plane uh, and started to uh, look at my finger from above um, and started mapping out, okay, I have um, a 26 millimeter distance. And then uh, if we look back here, um, the width uh, of my, my middle uh, crease and the, the width of my proximal crease are 17 and 22. So in here uh, you can see that I've created uh, a construction line uh, with a diameter of 17 and a construction line with a diameter of 22. Um, you could also just make a line and as long as it's connected to this midpoint right here you can make it 17 and 22. Uh, there are a million ways to do this, I'm just showing you one of them. Um, now if we take a look in side dimensions here um, I've just put in the dimensions for my thicknesses and I was referencing the top dimension line that 26 inch or, or 26 millimeter excuse me right there so uh, if we look here again some more uh, construction lines um, going for the height um, the way you can get this dimension here is by doing dimension that line this point and then you bring your cursor down uh, you learned how to do that in one of the pulley examples, most likely, for the Onshape uh, tutorials earlier this year. So once we have that, um, I can uh, begin to uh, make like alternate planes uh, if, if needed. Um, it, it's just useful to us uh, to create planes um, to, to, to draw on because we're not um, uh, 
or as needed is what I should have said a moment ago, uh, we're not working off of the, the front plane anymore. So uh, if you want to make a plane, you can search tools, find a plane tool, or use plane up here. And then I'm choosing uh, plane point as uh, how I'm going to create a plane. And I'm selecting uh, the front plane because it's uh, going to be uh, parallel to the plane that we want to draw on in a moment. And I'm choosing this point right here uh, at this, this crease, our future crease. Now, once I have that, then I can create um, some circles on that crease. You'll notice I have two circles here. We're only actually going to use one of them um, later on. Um, because we uh, we don't need um, the uh, the offset here, so um, I actually only uh, utilized um, this uh, circle right here at the end of the day. This one is an offset circle. You do not need this one. Um, once we have that, we need to create another plane. Same way, uh, we're going to be using the plane tool front plane uh, vertex is right here and it's going to create a plane that's parallel to the front plane but it's at this point uh, right here and then we're going to create a second ellipse uh, on uh, this sketch and again you don't need this one this is just me playing around with offsets um, and um, starting the ellipse from here one point here one point here you have a rough, not correctly sized, or, sh or not, roughly sized, but not correctly shaped uh, outline or cross section of your finger right there. Um, in order to create my reference part, all I'm doing is I'm taking those two ellipses that I, I just made. Uh, I'm using the loft tool, so up here up at the top, uh, and then I'm lofting a solid, um, a new solid between those two shapes. So at this point in this document here, I have uh, a reference to see um, just in Onshape workspace um, how big roughly this segment of my finger is right here. Um, so it's, it's just kind of a 3D representation um, to rough scale, not correct proportion or sizing because a cross section of your finger is not a perfect ellipse at the end of the day. Um, so we have this reference part. Now we can start designing an actual like basic sort of um, uh, splint around it. And, and the basic splint, all it is is uh, you making a, uh, a platform that you can then strap to your finger to immobilize a segment of your finger. So um, this should hopefully, I hope, be pretty straightforward for you. Um, if it's not, please let me know and just follow along here. I created a sketch on the top plane. Um, and I just created a rectangle of uh, rough, rough measurements related to um, the uh, uh, reference part that I, I had just created with y'all. And um, I'm making it a little bit bigger than my finger. You might want to give a little bit more breathing room here. I started playing around with the mirror tool and like rotating things a little bit just for fun. Um, for Velcro, you want to stick to a two plus millimeter slot. We can always chop Velcro down to be thin strips or wide strips. It comes in um, like inch, inch and a half uh, width strips, but the thickness is, is two millimeters plus. Two millimeters is like the minimum you can do for one uh, length of Velcro to go through. If you want to have two thicknesses of Velcro wrapped through twice, uh, it would obviously need to be bigger. This is just like a, a little bit of, uh, of a channel um, so that the strap can anchor through um, and, and then uh, connect uh, with the other piece of Velcro on the back side of the splint. So rough dimensions, your dimensions are going to be most likely different. Uh, I'm just working with uh, some, some numbers for uh, a one size fits all um, for myself here. Um, after you create this sketch just laying out the framework for the basic um, splint, you can go ahead and hit extrude. Now, um, I extruded it uh, two millimeters down. You can do two millimeters up. It really doesn't matter at this point in time um, as long as you give it some sort of thickness and it's a new extrusion. Um, you can get away with um, one millimeter thickness as well as up to... Uh, probably 0.5 millimeter thicknesses. Um, the thinner, the easier it is to bend and, and mold when you warm it up. Um, but two millimeters is gonna give you um, a, a decently strong uh, 
part off of a 3D printer. Um, so once we have this part, um, I can show you how to do a, a self-check. So way basic part here. Um, that's what I named it. It was probably called part two at one point. Um, I can two finger click on it and create a drawing of this part. Now I'm gonna choose four views right here and under custom template, um, I'm gonna tell it, yes, I want a border. Yes, I want two uh, zones, vertical, horizontal. Let's include the title block. Um, units are gonna be millimeters. Size A is eight and a half by 11. And that's super important for us to do a self-check. A self-check is when we make a one-to-one -one drawing, so a full-scale drawing, and we print it out and match it up to our finger. So what I will do in a moment um, is uh, after I go into, and if I can get it to work, sheet properties here, just two finger click and check that I have a one to one drawing. Sometimes they might auto scale it to like uh, two to one or one to two, depending upon how big or small your part is. Once I know it's one to one, then I can just go ahead and go up to uh, print and um, it may give you a pop-up blocker here before you see this, you might have to unpop up block it. Um, you'll see the drawing again, right? And then you can go ahead and print it on any old paper printer at home. And we'll match this up to our finger just to make sure uh, things are gonna kind of sort of fit. Um, and, and this is your way of, oh, uh, maybe I need to uh, move these channels. So your way to figure that out and understand like whether or not your model is feasible. So I'm just gonna rename this um, self check and then I'll call it basic. Now. That's how to do a self-check. Self-check works the same way each time. Um, if you update this part and you want to do another self-check, just make sure if this little yellow swirl or refresh is uh, full yellow, it's not grayed out, just hit refresh and then print again. For your paper models later on the project, you can use this cutout uh, after you print it out um, to create your paper model. So I don't think that requires any more um, uh, explanation for later in the project. Now, I wanna show you a couple more models just so we can get through them. I'm probably gonna make this like one longer video. Maybe I'll chapter it out in YouTube. Um, we have our complex design uh, and the, the bend Velcro. Bend Velcro is like not that far off from the basics. So if we look at um, bend Velcro, first before we get into complex. I think that makes the most sense here. It's just a different drawing. The extrude is one millimeter instead of two, so it's a little bit thinner. You may wanna do 1.5, it's up to you, but one works. Um, all I included was some additional tabs here. The dimensions are essentially the same. I may have even just referenced uh, the drawing for basic over top of it. To expand on that, before we get into the complex design, this part five here, and I can rename this maybe uh, finger cover. All I did was I just copied this design, transform copied it, so I moved it over a little bit. And initially it actually looked exactly the same as bend Velcro. And all I did, two steps to kind of play around with this and, and make it so it has a finger cover. Again, you can design this however you want. Um, I would suggest drawing it out on paper before you, you make any big commitments and on shape. Um, I just extruded this edge. So I had like a rectangular plank coming off the front of the splint. Um, and I approximated this distance um, is uh, twice the distance of um, the distal segment of my finger and I included uh, a little bit of uh, probably like 22 millimeters to approximate uh, like a bend around the finger. Um, so that's where I started getting this 75 millimeter uh, extrude length. Um, all kind of rough, because again, we can do self checks, we can print this thing out and try it out of paper if we cut it out of the paper and, and, and test it out. I extruded it pretty straightforward. I made a sketch on the top of this thing and I drew two circles. This can be any shape here. I just chose a circle because that's usually what you see um, in like thermoformed plastics kind of as like a stress relief. So you don't get like a weird 
crinkle on the front of it. Um, and also it makes it easier to bend. Um, this sketch, I made two circles and did an extrude remove, and then I'll try to pop up a photo of what this looks like um, bent uh, in shape. So these are all kind of like extensions of the, the way basic case, or not case, uh, splint. Um, and um, I think you can kind of really quickly get away from um, just the rectangle and get into something a little bit more refined um, if you choose. And again, to get 100% of the project, uh, we want to see that sort of like creativity and, and innovation on your own. Like, how can you design this thing? What are you interested in pursuing in terms of like exploring uh, material and, and production here? Um, it's all 3D printed stuff, so it's, it's pretty low stakes. Those are the basic cases and the extensions on the basic cases. Um, I kind of felt like saving this complex one uh, for later. Um, so we have the reference part that's been in like a constant throughout this whole thing. Just something for us to look at here um, before we do any sort of self-checking or printing or paper modeling. Um, what I did was is I copied my uh, reference part and scaled it. So I did a transform. You can look up transform. It looks like this. I scaled it. So I did transform scale. So that means it's going to make it bigger or smaller. I scaled it up by a factor that I believe uh, would give me probably like a two millimeter uh, thickness difference between the original part and the new part that we're scaling up. The reason we're making a new part is because I have copy part. It's going to scale it and make a new instance of it at the same time. So, um, and I'm not scaling it uniformly. You can see I'm keeping the, uh, the Y the same and then the Z and the X so um, X and Z uh, are, are getting scaled to be a little bit bigger. Um, now, once I had that, uh, I um, basically uh, started hacking and slashing stuff between my reference part and this new uh, design part here. Now, um, basically I said, okay, I'm gonna cut a hole out of this new part that I just copied and made bigger using the reference part. So I used Boolean, it's this tool up here. Um, and I said, you, you wanna keep the reference tool. I don't want you to get rid of it. Let's see, it's there, it's gone, it's there again. What this leaves me with is, um, and if I suppress this extrude, it leaves me with basically um, this. Now this is, um, again, that scaled up part just with a hole subtracted from it, and that is our um, reference part that did this subtraction using this Boolean tool. Now, um, I am using uh, some of my precedent to guide this complex model. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, some people 3D print this design. It's like pretty lightweight, um, and it, does, it seemingly does the job. Uh, and also I've seen some like mass produced versions of the splint for trigger fingers. So I thought it would just be fun to try to tackle it. Um, I'll try to put an image of what I'm talking about up in the video right here. Um, basically, um, in order to make it so that we don't just have like a truncated hollowed out cone on your finger, that doesn't seem ideal. Um, I created on our right plane, um, or our side plane, a, a sketch um, that will guide me through cutting out these areas um, so that we can have that complex shape design, but um, uh, hopefully pretty simply um, uh, modeled. So if I unsuppress this and I hop into this extrude, what you'll see here is um, those, those rough areas that I kind of outlined uh, in that simple sketch, I'm extrude removing them and I'm extruding removing them symmetrically. What that means is both directions from this plane. And uh, to like a, a, any old depth, as long as it is removing all the material from the, the part that we want to keep. Um, and then the merge scope is complex design, that, the scaled hollow depth design that I just showed you a moment ago. So it's an extrude remove, solid remove of those areas. And that leaves us with um, this. 
and this seemed to work off the printer um, pretty easily. Obviously not the prettiest thing. Um, it, it could be refined a little bit more um, and we're not doctors, so it's not something that's like really approved to be used, but um, looks pretty darn close to um, what we can see fabricated professionally as well as um, 3D printed, say on like Thingiverse or Proofs of Printers, any community uh, 3D model repository. What's also cool, um, I showed you here, um, you can do transform scale. This ideally, like we have this model, we could do an additional transform scale, either here in Onshape or on the printing software to just s try to scale this to fit other folks' hands. You don't always have to go back to like your reference measurements. Um, you can kind of manipulate things, um, the, the solid as it's designed. So. Um, exporting STLs, hopefully you know how to do that at this point. Um, it would be export uh, STL binary millimeter. Um, if you have more than one part that you're printing for some odd reason, uh, just let me know before you export. Um, but if you do decide to export it, make sure you have everything named um, and it's kind of related to what you have here in your parts list. Um, try to stick to using folders if you can. That's how you create a folder up there. Name your part studios and your drawings as you go. Um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions, either down in the chat if you're not in my class currently, or um, in person, just email me. You know my email. Um, so, um, and hopefully we're in class together so I can uh, guide you through Onshape into your documents. Just throw a comment on your document and uh, at me, you know, um, yeah. Um, good luck. I hope uh, this is interesting and you've, you've uh, learned some stuff and it, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this video is probably at least 30 minutes long at this point, um, but hopefully you're not asleep and it was a little bit informative. Um, let me know what you think about me guiding you through these rather than modeling it in front of you. I think um, you have the ability at this point in your uh, career uh, at NVD or NVOT to kind of um, navigate on shape and model things without me totally holding your hand through that process. Um, good luck, and I'm excited to see what you make.